All right. Um, we're going to talk today about, our, well, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I've been here, I think, every year, or at least the last several years here presenting about random stuff. But today we're going to talk about Guardians of the Logs. Uh, we're going to be introducing a new product, a uh, new open source tool called the Event Maturity Matrix. And we'll tell you what that means here in more detail. Am I going to do it? All right. Just making sure it's working. Uh, my name is Josh Rickard. I go by MS Administrator on Twitter, GitHub, you know, all that stuff. Uh, I am a senior software engineer currently at App Omni, where I work on their threat detection pipeline and product, um, where we process like billions and billions of events uh, a day. Um, I'm Paul. I'm not David. Uh, I do threat Why? detection. What? <laughs> Threat detection at Up Omni, um, but actually we do owe a lot to, to David. He did a lot of these slides, and uh, he was supposed to be here, but he had a scheduling conflict. So, I'm mm. Paul, not David. <laughs> All right. So, do you use SaaS applications? There's only one of you. Come on. All right. I thought I was going to have to like skip past this slide, but maybe I just need to like stand there now. All of you are liars. I know that every single one of you uses a SaaS app in your, in your life. You have a smartphone, unless you're like weird and you have like one of those, you can only call phones, whatever the hell that's called. Um, what's it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't. Yeah, there's like a. Anyways, there. <laughs> that's probably, probably a SaaS. Um, but yeah, some stats. Uh, so. Pretty much everyone's using SATs. Um, maybe we have the few outliers in this room. But uh, most enterprises are using 130 or more on average, um, which is 85% of their overall software usage. So most apps are SAS. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure what's still on-prem, but there must be something. Um, and it's a $200 billion market uh, by the end of the year. So lots of SAS, lots of money. Um, some pros and cons. We sort of have this laid out, so it's like, what are the benefits of SaaS? Why are people using it? And then what does that mean from a security perspective? So like how has this sort of changed the landscape of uh, what you have to monitor and why? So um, the first is rapid deployment. Uh, you can sign up for a SaaS app, you know, Salesforce, Microsoft, et cetera, just by filling out a form. I'm sure you know this. Um, and of course, that means people in your organization are doing the same thing. So you probably, like, unless you're using some sort of like SaaS discovery and even still maybe then, uh, there's SaaS apps that you don't know about, there's data in places that you don't know about. Um, and then related to that is sort of accessibility. So once it's up and running, it's easy to get to. It's easy for you to get to, it's easy for anyone else to get to. Um, so obviously that's, that's a benefit and it's a drawback. So it, it sort of it moves the traditional sort of monitoring boundary out to all those devices, your phones, your browsers, uh, whatever, your Western Union. Um, and with that, it's sort of, um, it's difficult sort of to keep track of who has access. So, you know, if, if you're integrated with an identity provider, maybe it's a little bit easier, but if you're not, then you're sort of provisioning users, you're responsible for deprovisioning, and it's just sort of hard to keep track of all that. Uh, and then integration, so this is like, you know, if you think of on-prem, if you wanted to sort of move data between applications, you were responsible for exporting it from one place, importing it to the next, or building pipelines and all that fun stuff. Um, now there's pretty powerful integrations between a lot of applications, so it's as easy as just sort of point and click, connect app X to X to Y, and the data just sort of moves around. and. Uh, the drawbacks there are kind of obvious, but, but also, you know, um, there's the permission perspective, like, you have to know what are the permissions that an application should have, um, you know, to, to sort of understand what your scope should and shouldn't look like, and that's not always so easy. Also, origin, sort of like, do you trust where your apps are coming from? How do you validate that? Um, how do you make sure that those, like, supply chains are, are, are safe? Couple more. Um, customization is an obvious one if you've used any of these platforms. Like, you can, you can build powerful business logic applications. You can also build totally crazy things. Um, 
I'm sure we've all seen like security platforms built on top of SaaS. I've worked on teams that used uh, a CRM for incident response and things like that. So there's all sorts of crazy things you can build, which means that it's really hard to know like what does a safe build look like? What is a safe configuration? And then how do I know when I've deviated from that? Uh, and it's sort of a, a continuous sort of evolving picture of like how should things work and how are they actually working? And then related to that is just the, the data picture of, you know, with, with all these things uh, comes the, the data that you're using for your business processes. So really easy to get data in, really easy to get data out. And then what we're highlighting and what we're going to talk more about is like, where can you monitor those processes? How do you actually know when someone's putting data in? What does it look like when someone downloads all the data? Um, what does it look like when people modify data and, and things like that? Yeah, so and does this look familiar to anybody? Has anyone ever seen this? This is a shared responsibility model. Has anyone heard, heard of that? Okay. So the shared responsibility model, if you're not familiar, is that on-premise type uh, infrastructure, you know, you had to worry about. You had to worry about the physical, you know, data center, uh, actually purchasing hardware, networking, all the different layers of, um, you know, software and how it works. So you have all the on-premise, and from a user perspective, you're always kind of responsible for, A, the data, but then also the underlying infrastructure. As we've kind of moved away from a data center to more uh, I, uh, or infrastructure as a service, um, you know, you take away some of that with the physical security and the host and the infrastructure, but uh, you still are responsible for the operating system, still having gold images, um, so I'm making sure that they're patched, so on and so forth. It's all still your responsibility. The opposite is now Amazon or Azure or wherever. Then you move into the SaaS world, right? And this is pretty self-explanatory, but you don't have to, we've kind of extracted away the operating system and the patching and, and all the other components, but there's still ones that we're trying to make aware that, that if you're not doing, <laughs> you must be doing, is still protecting your data in those SaaS applications. Um, Anyone here uh, monitor all their SaaS applications and all activity? All right. Well, this is a kind of call to action, let's just say. You need to go and start doing that now. Uh, it's not going away. It, you know, obvious, obviously, Paul, you mentioned, um, what is it, 130 plus different apps. I don't know how many um, you all have in your environment, but I know that there's uh, quite a bit and they continue to grow. So with that shared responsibility model, you know, we weren't really, um, we didn't really care too much. Uh, we cared about the data, but it wasn't like a huge concern. And a lot of people I think now, just don't worry about that when it comes to SaaS apps. Like authorizations taken care of by Okta, wherever your IDP is. Um, and that's pretty much the extent of it. But there's a lot of data in there and it's being used in a lot of unique ways and we need to keep track of it and protect it. So, a long time ago, again, we didn't, we didn't really care. When you had on-premise apps, uh, we had some logging, maybe. You know, IIS or whatever kind of web server logging. You might have a proxy logging, you know, things like that. But in SaaS world, you don't really have that. So um, really, we just, nothing's really changed uh, that much. And you can kind of see that. And you gotta love memes, right? Though, so, like, they're literally laughing at you. Uh, so, no, for real though, like with SaaS applications and, and monitoring, we need to actually start detecting threats in those environments because that's where everything is living from now on. So, challenges, right? From a security perspective, who, anyone here do detection engineering? Or that's part of the role, threat hunting or anything like that? All right. Well, um, <laughs> woohoo! The standards, right? There's lack of standards when it comes to security monitoring, especially in SaaS. Uh, all those products are completely different. And one of the biggest concerns from like a detection engineering or just security operations perspective is the lack of that schema or that standardization across it. So on top of that, we have the collection the difficulties. Um, not all of these products are the exact same. They all have different methods, and some have many different methods. We'll share some horror stories here in a minute. But uh, overall, 
Um, it's, it's a huge concern when it comes to collection. And how do you collect? When do you collect? What is that duration? Um, all the other kind of intricacies uh, around that. Then visibility. Uh, again, a lot of these SaaS audit log providers or service providers don't really offer up those logs or don't advertise them. And we're going to show you how you can, um, well, you can use this new framework to kind of build up your detection and response, especially when it comes to SaaS applications and just the cloud in general. Okay, cool, yeah. So we have some, uh, some horror stories or some examples. We didn't put any names on these. Uh, maybe you've seen some of them, maybe not. Um, the first one is an application um, generates audit logs, it generates login logs, but uh, the MFA events are sort of stored on like a web report um, that you can only access from the application. I've actually seen this in a couple places where like the applications were built for the purposes of like generating an audit trail and then like the security stuff is just like, it's available uh, as a web report but there's no easy way to get to it. Um, another fun fact about this one is that all the events are logged in CST and that's, that's specifically CST, it doesn't change for daylight savings. So, <laughs> I don't, has anyone seen that? Okay, interesting. That's kind of an obscure one, but. <laughs> in the future, yeah. We talk a little bit about, about timing too in, on the next slide. Um, at B, this is kind of common too, like, so they, they have a standard audit log, but there's no authentication events in it. I already sort of talked about that, but it's a, it's a common sort of pattern where the apps are built as sort of like an, a user audit trail without a focus on security. Security stuff is bolted on afterwards, but like maybe not so easy to get to. Um, this is a really common uh, app. You've probably seen this one. There's, there's good logging, but for some reason they don't include IP addresses. You have to sort of log in and turn that on. Um, uh, yeah, so these are sort of patterns that we've seen across a few different ones. I'm um, sure you've seen it too. Different licensing tiers. So there's like a, there's a standard audit log that maybe has like logins or, or something. And then if you want more, you have to pay extra. Um, which is like maybe part of the like SSO security tax or maybe not. Maybe like a different service. Um, there's, there's plenty of apps that sort of don't provide IP addresses across the different event types that they log. So you'll have a, a login event and that will have an IP address, but then later on the user's doing some things, they're updating objects, they're downloading, et cetera, and there's no IP address on those logs and there's no session ID. So the only really way to correlate that data is to look at like timestamps and usernames and that, that type of thing. Um, and then yeah, the timing one. So this is again pretty common, you know, there's significant latency sometimes in how logs are delivered by design, you know, they'll, they'll document that to say like, don't expect these logs for, for up to 12 hours. Um, and then there's other services that make no guarantee regarding, you know, like no sort of SLA. So the logs are eventually consistent, we'll eventually send them to you. But every time you pull logs, you're going to have to dedupe to figure out what you may have missed. <clears throat> Um, so this is just a picture of some, some notable sort of breaches from the past couple of years. It's definitely not all of them. I think, um, you know, the points worth calling out are just going back to that 85% number. So if you realize that 85% of the software used within enterprises, which I think is pretty accurate or roughly accurate, you know, you'd, you'd have a hard time finding a breach that at this point that doesn't include a SaaS app, especially if you're including like identity providers. Um, so there's been a lot recently. I think the, the other thing worth calling out too is that like sometimes it's not so obvious. Like the, the big platforms get called out a lot, Microsoft, Google, there's been a lot even in the past couple months. But sometimes you'll be reading a, a report and it'll just say like, you know, customer contact information was, was lost and where's that coming from? It's probably either like a support ticketing system or a CRM or something like that. Yep, some headlines, I'm sure you've seen them. Okay, so sort of recapping the, the history um, and the sort of high level problem. Basically just, you know, SaaS is everywhere. Um, it's over, overall good for business, but brings a lot of different sort of security challenges that, that maybe teams have to adapt to. 
um, governance is, is very different, um, or maybe not different, but more important, right? Since we talked about how accessible, rapid deployment, that type of thing, it's, it's more important to sort of monitor these things. Um, you know, audit logging is sort of a mixed bag. You, you don't know what to expect. You don't know when an app is going to generate a log, and you don't know what that log is going to look like and, and how to get it. So, um, and then the last piece is, is sort of obvious, comes with the comes with the big picture, which is just that, you know, SaaS breaches are only going to be more common. Um, that's it, really. I mean, there's so much data in there, and everyone's using them, and so you can expect to see more and more. I love this meme. Why shouldn't we have another security matrix, right? Well, um, I'd like to introduce the, you know, because of these problems that, that Paul is talking about, right, with, with the, again, the, the prevalence uh, of SaaS just growing in environments, we're trying to, A, raise kind of awareness of, hey, you need to be monitoring this stuff because there's, uh, there's a lot of data that uh, organizations are moving around, and there's a lot of integrations, a lot of third party, uh, and you don't know what's happening to that data. And if you're not monitoring this uh, environment, um, well, yeah, you should. Yeah, that, that's kind of the, the big point. But let's introduce SAS event security, or sorry, event maturity matrix. Jeez, messed that up. So th this is really a, a website. It, it, when we'll show you and we'll kind of go through and break down all the different components and, and all the data points that we're, we'll, we'll show you. But SAS event security matrix, or the event ma maturity matrix, is a, basically a knowledge base of a centralized documentation, as well as the nuances, and it kind of explains the nuances of uh, different audit logs from different products into a normalized and standard way. Um, we provide examples, and we also, again, that visibility mapping, and we'll, we'll kind of walk through and show you what those mean, but, but really it's a uh, service or, or um, a framework that we can kind of expand and kind of normalize these events across different products in SaaS environments within, uh, that, that are applicable to security operations. So let's talk about it. Centralized documentation. So we'll, I'll have the links at the end, but if you actually wanted to, you could now. It's eventmaturitymatrix.com, and it is a uh, web app that has this data-driven uh, definition framework. So, but, it, but really, it's all about having current, up-to-date information about these different uh, audit events in a centralized place, as well as explaining the nuances of how the API works. Um, maybe there's some uh, problems with uh, the collection, and we've kind of noted that from our experience and other people's experience. Um, we also have licensing, right? Uh, again, some of these horror stories that Paul is talking about, they, they, uh, these vendors charge for uh, certain audit logging features. And uh, so how do you protect, you know, against a product that you, they don't, you have to pay for more logging to get basic logging. Um, and then you have latency and retention, right? It all matters for, for live detection. Uh, if their latency is a day, uh, it doesn't really help you much. But um, so it, it kind of gives it in the centralized place where it's all organized and visually, uh, well, visually appealing and easy to, to digest. We also, again, that visibility mapping. Um, one of the coolest things, I think, is that we have taken a lot of these events and normalized them to uh, central core um, event types and categories. So a uh, category is going to be, and we'll show you examples and go through demos, but let's say authorization or authentication. All those are different kind of buckets uh, of events. And then we also have the normalized event types that we have mapped uh, different products to. There's also the supported and unsupported. Uh, this, both, uh, this is both the activity, but it's also even down to the field level, meaning um, you, know, you receive, uh, let's say, a log event that's in JSON. Uh, we go down to the actual field level in that response uh, and map and show what data is available in that log and what is not available in that log. Um, for instance, if an IP address is in that log or not. And then, again, we provide also these real-world examples. Every single event uh, mapped to uh, event maturity matrix it has provided examples, at least one, possibly multiple. 
just depends on the service. Uh, so the div one of uh, the great examples is, let's say, authentication. And you have, um, you know, when you create a user, creating a guest user versus creating an admin user, completely different logs and completely different views of how you could respond to that event. All right, so we've talked about, you know, the kind of the history and we've talked about the basics of event maturity matrix, but we wanted to kind of showcase some of the scenarios or, or different situations that this would be beneficial, right? Incident response. When you're in an incident, do you want to be reading documentation? Probably not. You don't want to be digging around, going behind paywalls, all this other stuff. So we wanted to provide a, a centralized place, again, that, that you can view this in a very easily consumable and digestible way to s speed up that, that process. We've also, you know, with uh, the threat detection in general, how are you monitoring? Wh how can you collect this data? Where do you collect it? What is the format? Uh, and then all the other kind of details around that event. And uh, we've also have, you know, compliance, right? Now you can visually see um, if you're providing the data that, that is needed for some compliance um, that, uh, I'm, I'm not a compliance guy, so, <laughs> um, you know, requirements that, are, that, are, that need to be met. And then, obviously, the SAS evaluations. Um, one of the goals, we don't have this currently, but uh, you'll be able to visually compare um, or um, contrast different products against each other. So, um, for instance, if one product doesn't um, log uh, basic authentication events, um, but another one does, maybe that's advantageous for your business or for you to go with another, one product over the other, vice versa. Um, and also the unsupported fields and values and all the other kind of intricacies that, are, that go into the decisions. Yeah, I think that the last example is a really interesting one because, like, if if you've ever worked in or or just seen the work that like a risk team does in a large enterprise, like they're constantly being asked to evaluate new applications. Every business team wants a new app every week, and they want like ten different at least project management tools. And so, looking to the future, I think it could be interesting to sort of look at you know how these applications implement security and use that as a Maybe it's a tie into compliance too, but like, you know, assessing risk. Um, so uh, jumping into sort of the terms that we use, and then we'll, we'll show you some screenshots after this and then go into the demo. But um, just wanted to talk, talk terms first. SaaS app is a product, obviously. Um, an event source is, um, it's just a log source, right? Like, so sometimes there's multiple ways to get logs out of an app and we define those as, um, as event sources. Maybe that'll make more sense when you see examples. Um, a category is a, a contextual grouping of, of the, the next few objects. So like event types live in a category. Think of a category as like authentication. And then event types are like a normalized set of events that we expect to be logged, like a user login or MFA verification. And then event attributes are the fields that we expect to be present in those logs. So these are the screenshots. Hopefully you can see them, but we'll do the demo too. Um, these are the products that are on the site now. So if you open the site, this is what you'll see on the left in the red box is all the currently supported products. If you click on one of them, you'll get the event sources. Sorry, that's kind of hard to read. It says GitHub. And then the two event sources for GitHub are audit logs and webhook events. Um, next thing we're highlighting here is just the categories, so authentication, authorization, and then the two um, system and activity auditing. And then the event types underneath that. So it's pretty straightforward at this point. There's um, 34 different event types that we've started with. Uh, you can see like account login, account log out. Um, We'll get into some examples of these as we sort of walk through in it towards the end. A quick note on, um, on event types. So the verbs that we're using today, at least in the initial 34 set, are, um, so there's two sets. There's CRUD plus download and then ACR. Um, if that doesn't make sense, the example sort of highlights why that's important. It's imagine you're updating the, you have a group of users. Imagine you're updating the name of it. So you're changing it from, you know, admin users to whatever, not admin users. 
Um, you could call that an update group event. Now imagine that you're adding, uh, adding a user to that group. You could also call that an update group, but it doesn't really, doesn't really make sense. There's not enough context there. So we use CRUD and then we use ACR. The ACR verbs are for updating membership of a group. So you're adding to a group or you're changing the membership of a group or remember, uh, removing from a group. Uh, and then finally, if on each box for the event types, you see a little, uh, little box inside the box called show attributes. And if you click on that, you get two things. Um, screenshot on the left shows supported and unsupported fields. Um, this is cool because you kind of, you don't have to remember the schema. So you're looking at an event type and all the fields are here and you could see if they're supported or not, if they're present or not. So you can, you know, look at the create user event and see that it has these fields, but it doesn't have these ones. Um, and then the other tab there, you click over and you can see the example logs. Um, in this case, we've got uh, two examples. So there's a log for when you create a, a member account and one for when you create a guest account. Um, it, it's significant only like when there's slight differences in the formats of the logs. We'll try to call that out as two different examples. All right, so that brings us to our demo. Woo! No rat. So I'm gonna have to exit out of my home. And just so I'm gonna have to like navigate because my monitor or whatever. But like like you said, if you go to eventmaturitymatrix.com, uh, there's a mobile site now. But um, we'll continually to add more products. We have several already in the, the uh, let's say pipeline, whatever. Um, you know, but, but the majority uh, of it is around these, and we're not trying to like uh, call out certain products or you know anything like that. We don't care about the products. It's more of how do we actually log and protect against attacks in these environments. And uh, we'll show you some examples here soon. But um, for the most part, we have all these kind of different products and, and event types or event sources. So if you're if you're looking here, um, let's just take a look at like box, right? Um, so we'll just look at box and we can click on that event source. Sorry, I'm trying to speak into this and navigate. But you can actually view the details when you, and this is why I wanted to kind of show this demo, is you can go in and click on the little informational box and it'll show you details about box and like what the company does and you know, if you didn't know. But uh, we also have like links and references to their documentation types, schemas and other uh, related information that are holistic to Box. Um, some products, if we looked at like Salesforce, they have like 50 plus different uh, event sources um, where Box or OneDrive or whatever has one, right, or, or two. Um, so those nuances matter <laughs> when it comes because uh, it's gonna be a little bit more complex in a, in a Salesforce environment than it is others. So we, we have these kind of stream types and if you look, like it's all the links, I'm not gonna go, I don't think my internet's on, but. Um, additionally, with that event source, you can view, again, the, the individual details. We will include any references to like schemas or, or data uh, formats. And then we also have things like retention detail. Uh, how long do they keep those logs for? And that matters when you're doing, when you're sourcing. But also the latency. Uh, this one is luckily near real time, but some of them are delayed by 12 hours, right? Or by hours. Just kind of depends on the product. Um, but we kind of call that out as well as other notes and details and the, the schema and definitions, but we won't go into that, that part of it. So if we look at you know, these authorization, and sorry, this is kind of zoomed in here, but we can see like different uh, authorization points. Let's say like create role. Obviously this uh, service doesn't really have that uh, event or event type, but these are the normalized event types that we were uh, discussing earlier. Now, when we look at one that, that actually exists, wherever that's at, let's go to GitHub. Uh -huh. So um, it, it's kind of hard to tell on the screen, actually, but I want to call out that they are different shaded. Uh, you see this is kind of a dark, darker blue than the, the white. It doesn't really show up on this monitor, but uh, they are different colors, I promise. And so it kind of uh, visually, you can quickly see all the different uh, events that are supported by that product. But, you know, the differences of, okay, this one has IP address and IP geolocation, user agent, that's great, but uh, what is the result? Did a failure happen? Does it, does it tell you any of that information? Like, yeah, okay, 
Uh, someone logged in, but was it successful? We don't know. It's not really logged there. So those details kind of matter in, the, in the, this event. Um, obviously, there's other you know, components that you can use, but, but those differences is where we're trying to actually show um, and highlight why uh, something like this is definitely needed. From an example log, um, they're, they're pretty basic um, for, for this, of course, but some of them are massive JSON. If you're not familiar with JSON, it doesn't really matter. It's a key and then a value. That's all you have to really know. All right, let's take a look at, uh, so we looked at Gouda, but let's look at like Salesforce, right? And I'm just gonna keep scrolling here because there, there's like tons of them, of these different event sources. And each one of them are you know, very specific. Um, so for example, this one is, I don't even know which one it is, but um, <laughs> let's say account login, right? So account login, luckily, you know, but each uh, event source is a different API, is a different service that you're gonna have to collect data from. And so each one of those goes into your detection and response uh, processes. Again, we can uh, scan, scan through and we can actually see you know, Slack and I'm gonna show you another detail where this, this one has like a few more links and references, but um, so default you know, retention study or retention for uh, Slack is 90 days as well as uh, near real time, but it can be um, customized. So those data points are all kind of in this central visual um, well, visibility map that uh, we call you know, event maturity matrix. Additionally, if you wanted to learn more about like the intricacies of like how it works behind the hood, it's actually all uh, YAML like definition files. Uh, that's all on the, the repository and we have extensive documentation explaining like how that works under the hood. If you wanted to know maybe uh, details about a very specific event type, uh, the description of what it actually means, um, we have that kind of all documented in, in the repository itself. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, so you can also filter by uh, these events. Sorry, I'm gonna go to another one here. You can actually uh, just filter all the, the entire list by, let's say, only ones that are supported. Sorry. Oh, man. Yeah, so you can actually just filter them out and just get rid of all the ones that you don't care about uh, and only focus on the ones that you want and vice versa. But it, it's a really easy way to kind of visually, again, compare. Uh, I think the next step, well, we'll go into that in, the, in one of the slides. All right. That's kind of a, a brief demo, right? It's uh, event maturity matrix. We'll share the link at the end, but it's eventmaturitymatrix.com. Um, yeah. Let's take a look at some, how, do you, how would you use this? You know, when would this come in, come in handy? So this is a, anyone, does, does this look familiar to anybody? Like these, this slide. I know, I know it might be a little hard to, to read, but uh, this is a typical like chain, a, an attack path, whatever kill chain, I don't care what you call it, but basically this is bad. And so, oh, it's bad, okay? We have Tim over here. Uh, Tim likes to click on things, just like most people in the world. That's a shame comment. The, so we, you, know, you have the phishing site. They went to the phishing site and they had an adversary in the middle. And they have these secrets, the hacker took over, and then persistence and all that. And we'll go through these and show you um, how you can actually detect. And it just depends on the product, but, but that's why we have a event maturity matrix uh, here. So initial access, right? Uh, you have Tim, clicked on a link, uh, went to a phishing site, uh, adversary in the middle captured some, some credentials or convinced them to share some secrets, whatever the situation is, and they now have a valid account in that uh, environment. Okay, So, credentials, MFA code. Not all products support this, uh, which is surprisingly shocking, especially from someone who is used to like Windows authentication logs and, and all the endpoint data that we have. Uh, SaaS applications and monitoring that activity is extremely difficult. Um, it's getting better, but um, you know, because of the normalization and, and the different event types, we have account login as well as uh, MFA verification where you have a chance to actually detect this um, threat. 
An, an example, uh, again, we have account login over here, where, and this is actually from the same product, we removed the product name just to kind of <laughs> compare, but um, you have an account login, okay, they have a lot of cool information, but all right, they have an IP address, great, but they don't include any of the geolocation information. So we now have to enrich that data to make sure that we know what that data is. Um, we, we also have uh, user agent name, great, but credential con context, failure, user type, all of that critical other information is just missing from, from that product. So MFA verification, they don't support anything at all. So if someone changed their MFA token or added a new one, you're not gonna detect it at all. Um, so that's the huge contrast in, in where we're trying to a, bring awareness of this, uh, but also trying to normalize it in a digestible way, again, that, that makes sense for everybody. Okay, cool, yeah. So I'll, I'll go through the next few slides, which is just sort of some things that could happen and some examples of what it would look like uh, in, the, in the matrix. Uh, sounds weird to call it that, actually. Um, so we're in, uh, we logged in, we have an active session to some application, um, but all we have are username and passwords, so we need some way to, to satisfy MFA without constantly phishing it. So maybe we add a new factor. We have the, and on the right is just obviously sort of the, the different event types that we define for each step. So add enrollment, remove enrollment. Uh, maybe I just add my own identity provider so I don't have to worry about that. Um, those would be security configuration, uh, audit activity events, so those are CRUD events. Um, or, you know, update user at the top if I'm just changing like an email or password. So maybe I go in, I just re register my own MFA, I've got the username and password, and now I can continue to log in. Um, I don't know how readable these are, but these are, again, just, they are examples from, from, a, from one of the services. We just took the name off. Um, update user on the left. This is one... I don't remember what service it is from now because I took the name off, but like this is what I was talking about earlier where there's no IP address in these logs. So like the, the login event I'm sure has an IP address, but then as you're going down and sort of like, now you're updating a user account and now there's no IP address on those, there's no session ID. So, you know, in, in this case where you have like a session hijacking attack, uh, it's, you know, that's kind of unfortunate. And then on the right, the right screenshot is just the MFA enrollment. Um, these, these sometimes look a little bit different depending on um, obviously what the service is and what type of enrollment um, or what type of factor you're adding. I've seen a, I've seen a lot of different um, examples of logs that we'll try to get in there. Um, Okta has some really good, some really good MFA logs obviously. Um, so the next step is uh, I've got persistence, I've got my own factor um, configured. Maybe I want to do some things to uh, you know, evade defenses, try not to get caught. Um, a common one is just disable auditing, auditing logging. So we've got a, an event there for delete security configuration, just be the, a CRUD event. Or, um, you know, maybe I just register my own integration so I could authenticate as a, a service account or, or something like that. Um, again, more example logs over on the, on the left, uh, create integration, and then over on the right is an update security configuration. And then the final step, um, you know, collect, collection and exfiltration. So there's a lot that could happen here. Um, a common pattern is just sort of like, there's, there's a lot of ways to get data out of a SaaS application. Um, so in this case, let's say they just sort of download a report of all your contact information or something. Um, so in, in these two events, we would have like a read resource and then a download resource. Um, it's kind of generic and it's gonna vary across platforms. So this is where it's kind of important to look at, to look at example logs for services. Um, and then these are, these are two examples. You can, you can click around. I think it's sort of more, more interesting when you're looking at services that you work with uh, and you can sort of understand you know, where, where the important events are. So these are kind of just two generic examples of a, a read resource and a download resource event. They're gonna, they're gonna vary widely from service to service. Sweet, so this is the event maturity matrix. Right now it's SaaS based. 
Um, we do have plans to kind of maybe look at expanding it or, or kind of normalizing uh, even further out. But uh, the framework is there. And, you know, there's a lot of kind of next steps that we, but we want to kind of do this presentation, get feedback, so on and so forth. But the core kind of features or, or big pieces that we're going to focus on is, you know, adding more services, of course. Um, we have several already in, in line. I don't even know how many, but uh, several. Um, and we're doing this, yeah, again, it's all open source. Uh, all the data is open source. Uh, it's all in a standard um, format that, that's pretty easy to read, I think. But um, yeah, so we're also le looking for feedback from that, but that may be a little difficult for some to, to get started with. But if you're interested, let me know and we can become best friends. Expand on the intricacies, right? Uh, add additional details that, that matter. Uh, yes, we have latency and we have duration, but um, observations that we've seen, uh, issues, downtime, all those other components are probably, and more, are gonna be added. Is just kind of to add more and more data around it. Um, and we also want to add uh, attack paths. So one of the visual, visualization pieces of it is if you could compare um, different attack types uh, to different product and service um, applications, uh, SaaS applications. And uh, it might take a little, a little work, but um, I think we can do it. And lots and lots more. You know, a lot of UI updates and a lot of more uh, data components, but those are kind of the core pieces. But one of the biggest things, we need the feedback. We need to make sure that it's you know, useful, helpful. Um, and one of the big points I guess I wanted to make is that with this, um, we, from a security perspective, we, we need to defend and we need to monitor this stuff. Most people are putting it into place and letting it go. You know, they have too many other worries, too many other logs, too many other services just on-prem, and I get it. But from a operational perspective, we've seen it. Uh, everywhere is moving to SaaS, and we don't think that that's gonna stop at any point. Um, and it's just gonna continue to grow. So we need to figure out a way, how can we detect malicious threats or just anomalous activity in these environments when these services do not provide or do not give a way to actually defend against those type of attacks. So it's kind of a call out, but, but it's also, you know, we wanna help and support you all who are doing this on the day to day. Yeah, I don't know, um, sorry Josh, I don't know how well we highlighted it, but one of the goals, one of the big goals is really to, to provide like an up-to-date reference. Uh, I think there, there is some information out there, a lot of it's outdated. If you ask like ChatGPT about like logs, it might give you information, like maybe it'll make something up or maybe you'll get information that was accurate a couple years ago. So there is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of rot out there, I think, in terms of like documentation about this. So. We do, we definitely do appreciate any input. I'm sure there's things we got wrong um, or that, you know, is, is out of date by the time we committed it up. So that's really important to us. I just wanted to point out that ChatGPT is always right. So. <laughs> this is a total joke. Don't, if you didn't get the joke, I'm not uh, serious. So eventmaturitymatrix.com, uh, please go check it out. Again, they have a mobile, we have a mobile site and all the data is there, it's freely accessible. But if you wanted to, you can view the documentation from there. But uh, if not, you can just go to our uh, GitHub, App Omni Labs, uh, and Event Maturity Matrix is the repository. Please go check it out. Um, let us know the feedback, and we hope that you enjoy the Event Maturity Matrix.